So New Jersey, it's reopening 14 months after the start of the COVID pandemic and shutdown. The Garden State is going to join New York and Connecticut in reopening without capacity limits in two weeks. But New Jersey paid a big toll on the pandemic. The state has the largest per capita COVID death total as a result of the initial spike last March and then again this fall and winter. So is the state ready to open? Only one person we need to ask right now, and that is the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy. How are you, Governor? Good to see you, ladies. I'm, I'm well, and, uh, and slowly but surely we're getting there. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting there. Uh, but it's a good thing that you're starting to ease up on restrictions right now, because when you see some of our southern states who've been um, acting like there was no pandemic, and the numbers, the numbers are almost the same as your numbers with the lockdown. What do you say to that? Yeah, I think the reasons are, are, are a couple. Uh, number one, we're the densest state in America, in the, in the densest region in America. That's normally a really good thing, not in a pandemic. Secondly, we're a northern state, which means we've got cold winters and we have to spend and live most of our lives indoors until recently. The combination of people doing the right thing, and they have by the millions in New Jersey, vaccination rollout, which is among the strongest, I would say, in the nation, uh, and the weather getting warmer, uh, that combination is now working in our favor and the numbers are, are getting better by the day, getting meaningfully better. And those numbers allow us, the health numbers allow us to do just what you suggest, which is to open this place up. All right. And a lot of people are excited that restaurants have a little bit more capacity. Some of the restaurants, though, they're concerned that they're not going to really be able to make the kind of money that they need to make to stay alive because of the six foot social distancing rule. Do you think, do you foresee any time soon kind of doing away with that? Yeah, I mean, on that one, we take our lead from the CDC. Uh, so that's really a federal parameter that we have stuck to from the beginning. And my guess is, by the way, that they, that, that will change. They've already changed it for schools. They've dropped that to three feet. Um, I'm, I don't have any inside knowledge here, but I suspect as vaccines get further and further rolled out, as, as we, we, we make more progress as a nation, I'll bet you that number comes down. If that number, for instance, came down to three feet for restaurants, that's a game changer. We're also allowing bar seating as of today, mm -hmm. uh, which is another big step for restaurants. And lastly, the, the, uh, the federal American Rescue Plan money, uh, which we're gonna put on the street, a lot of that's gonna go to small businesses and restaurants. We're starting to see some of the nursing homes open up uh, through the tri-state as well. I know that you all really suffered um, as a result during the pandemic from loss of life. What's the latest with uh, opening up the nursing homes, allowing people to come in? Yeah, I mean, this has been uh, one of these balances where it's a no-win situation. You're, you're protecting physical health on the one hand and the mental health uh, strain of the residents as well as their family on the other hand is overwhelming. And Laura, you're absolutely right. We got clobbered, uh, every state did, but we certainly got clobbered early on in long-term care. But, and this is really uh, good news, the, the, the rate of vaccination among residents in long-term care is now very high, among the highest in the nation. Uh, staff numbers are not as high. We want them, we want them to get higher. Uh, we, we look at this by region in the state. Uh, all of our regions are trending in the right direction. So with all of that being said, we're able to allow the in-person uh, visitations in most places in the state right now. And God knows people need it from the residents to their family members and loved ones. I know you want kids back in the classroom. You want teachers back in the classroom. So what is the projected timeline? Will they be able to be by the fall there? And what about vaccinations? Is it mandatory for teachers? Yeah, so right now we're, uh, we're gonna cross 90% of our kids either in hybrid or in person within the next week or two, which is great. And my guess is that gets close to 100% in hybrid or in person this school year, which is great. And God knows everybody needs it, from the kids to the educators, moms and dads. Uh, I fully expect that we will be wide open for business Monday through Friday in the fall. Um, and and I, I'm not sure yet on, the, on, on vaccinations. I'd like to think that people get there of their own free will. Uh, and so far that's working. 
Uh, we're not there yet in terms of our objectives on vaccinations, but it's, we're making good progress. Um, but to be, to be determined what the vaccine particular aspect looks like in the fall. So uh, I love your initiative to get people, uh, you know, uh, shot in the arm. It's called a shot in a beer. Uh, the New York governor is doing tickets for um, the Mets and the Yankees. Some people are giving 100 bucks to get a vaccine, vaccine as, a, as a way to lure them in. Do you foresee at any point that you might give some cold, hard cash uh, to incentivize, incentivize people to come and get a, a shot? We might. I think all things are on the table, frankly. Uh, we have to get to our objective, which is 70 percent of our adult population by the end of June. Uh, so far, so good, by the way. It won't be easy. And we always knew that we'd have to go into a major offensive effort. We launched Operation Jersey Summer on, uh, on Monday. It's got 12 or so individual aspects to it, one of which is a shot and a beer. Uh, I'm going to go buy one of those breweries today and, and thank them for their uh, participation. I may have a, a beer myself, uh, but uh, it, all options remain on the table. We're going to do what it takes to get our folks vaccinated. So for a while there, you were like the three musketeers, uh, the governor of uh, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey, you all coordinated all your restrictions together. Is that still happening? Yeah, at least thematically it is. Um, we, we coordinated pretty closely, quite closely, in fact, for these May 19 openings, which are a week from Wednesday. The answer is yes, our teams speak all the time. Uh, we speak when we need to. Uh, and I think this example, these reopening steps we were all going to take are pretty big ones. You know, you can get away with going your own way if it's a small incremental step. These are big ones, and I think we all felt we needed to do, do it largely in concert. It's been a relationship and a partnership that has worked from the beginning of this pandemic. I think it's saved lives, and uh, where we need to uh, continue it, uh, we do. Election year. This is November. A few more months and you're going back to the polls. I saw the latest Monmouth University poll showing you 14% down from your height back in April uh, at 71%. Now it's 57%. Does that concern you? I frankly don't spend a, a minute looking at the polls, honestly, uh, particularly I, I didn't I wasn't much of a poll guy before the pandemic uh, and certainly since this pandemic. I, I don't. I saw the headlines. Um, I'm gratified. It looks like more people uh, lean toward favoring what we're doing than not. But honestly, uh, I got my head down trying to do everything I can to save lives, get people back to work, open up businesses, um, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. We've seen. Uh, we've had a couple people on talking about some of those areas, Governor, that are not uh, still convinced they should get vaccinated. There have been outreaches. Uh, we were talking with the head of uh, the hospital in Newark the other day saying that there's outreach efforts to try to get these segments of minority populated areas to get the vaccine. What are you doing for that? Yeah, that's a good it's a very good point. Um, we've done overall, I think, as well as any large American state has done on vaccine rollout. But the equity element of that is still a work in progress in communities of color, with homebound individuals, hard to reach communities, it's a work in progress. So we've got mobile units, we're using houses of worship aggressively, uh, local, we're localizing this effort. You know, we, we've got a bunch of big, very successful, they, they run like a machine, these big mega sites. Uh, we're now localizing them. It's more of a hub and spoke um, reality. And we knew we'd get to this point. We knew that we would need to go from uh, people coming to the vaccine uh, to our getting the vaccine to go to the people. And that's the process that we're going to be in between now uh, until we get to our objectives and uh, God willing, we'll get there. So uh, the past year, you talk a lot about knuckleheads and knucklehead behaviors. Um, anybody driving you crazy these days? <laughs> you know, it's funny. We um, we still have knuckleheads here or there. We, you know, there are executive order uh, violations that are cited uh, that we refer to in our press conferences. But I have to tell you, people by the millions have done the right thing. Proprietors, restaurants, small businesses, bars, whatever it might be, by the tens of thousands have done the right thing. Uh, it's been an incredible. 
uh, effort by New Jerseyans up and down the state, I have to say. So we talk about knuckleheads, I personally do, but it is a vast, vast minority. There's always gonna be some folks who don't pay attention, uh, wanna push back against whatever we're doing, but for the most part, folks have done and continue to do the right thing. We're happy to hear that. I just love the word knucklehead, and I just <laughs> love the yeah, fact that you, I, <laughs> that you use it. It gives me a, a it's a channeling the three stooges, so it's a, oh my reliving God. my childhood. And what about the woman who needs no introduction? Uh, Dr. Judy, how is she doing? She's doing great. Uh, she's an extraordinary leader, an incredible health uh, commissioner. She's worked seven days a week for 14 months plus, frankly, more than that, because we saw this thing coming uh, as far back as January. She's extraordinary, and her team is extraordinary as well. All right, and Mrs. Uh, the First Lady, how is she doing? What are you doing for uh, Mother's Day? She's great. Happy Mother's Day, by the way, ladies. Uh, we're going to take Mom out to, uh, to lunch, uh, hopefully do right by her on Sunday. We might have a surprise or two in store for her, but she's doing great, really? and she's a great mom. Uh -huh. okay. Surprises. We love surprises, <laughs> Governor. Anyway, nice to have you on Good Day New York again. Thank you so much, and uh, continued success in New Jersey. Yeah. Good to have you it's on. It's great to be back, and I can't wait to be sitting on that couch doing this in person. I hope yes. sooner than later. We do, too. Thank, Thank you, Governor.